Kawaii te and salate amnais. It's been a very long time. I have been very busy. Weird things have been happening. Um, life changes, etc. But I'm back. I'm gonna try to be a bit more um, consistent with uploading things and talking about stuff. But today, we get to talk about the cost of applying to graduate school in the United States. So, um, for me, I thought about applying to graduate school outside of the United States, but I decided that because of everything that's going on in the world, um, I would just apply to US schools for this year, and then I would reevaluate in the event that I needed to reapply for um, a PhD program. So what happened was, <laughs> I got rejected from every single PhD program that I applied to. So what um, I'm going to have to end up doing is reapplying next year. But one of the things I did do when I applied for the first run is I also applied for a post baccalaureate in classical languages at the University of Pennsylvania because where I live right now, it is somewhere that I can commute to without having to worry about moving. So um, that's why I didn't apply to another place or um, didn't uh, consider, you know, other post back programs that might be um, cheaper or easier to um, accommodate my financial situation. Uh, so I'm still waiting to hear back on potential funding for that, but I did get into that program. No PhD acceptances, but I am going to be doing uh, the post back, so I will be getting a bit more language training before I go. So um, the other uh, thing I'm going to talk about what to do uh, when you get rejections from all PhD programs that you've applied to on your first run. That's going to be a different video. So right now I'm just going to talk about the cost of applying because it's a lot to be applying to these places and you might not even get in. And you know, it, a lot of people who are from outside of the U S might not know that, you know, you have to pay and you don't get that money back. So I'm going to talk about that today. I have a, a cheat sheet here. Um, so I applied to, let's see, eight PhD programs. Two were in New York, two were in New Jersey. One was in Delaware, where, which is where I currently live. Um, one was in Michigan, one was in Illinois, and one was in Connecticut. So when, <laughs> when you apply to that many places, a lot of times it can rack up the cost. And not only are you applying paying for the application. You're also paying for the GRE because most places require for you to uh, give your, your GRE scores. And then if you have more than four schools that you're sending it to, every school after the four free ones they let you send is an additional $27 each, which is very frustrating. And I'm gonna tell you what I messed up on for that in particular in a minute. So for one of the schools in New York, it was $105 for one application. For the next school in New York, it was $110. For one of the schools in New Jersey, it was $95. The other school in New Jersey was $70. The one in Delaware was $75. I didn't have a problem with the Delaware one though. And here's why. I actually got an email from them that said, here's how we're gonna make your application easier. Here's a tuition fee waiver, or not a tuition fee waiver, I'm sorry. Here's a, an application fee waiver, and that'll make ap applying more uh, accessible to you. And I was like, oh, this is wonderful. I didn't even have to apply for it. I didn't have to email anybody. They sent it to me on their own, which was the only school that did that. But I'll talk about those in just a second. <laughs> Then the Michigan school cost $75. Um, the one in Illinois cost $90. And the one in Connecticut cost $105. Uh, 
So that sounds like a lot of money. And it is. And then the UPenn post back is $75. So um, out of all of those, only three of them I actually had to pay for because I apply for application fee waivers for every single one of them. One school said, we don't really give those out, which I find ridiculous and silly, but um, I said, okay. So, uh, but because I had been laid off be due to, you know, everything that's going on as somebody who worked at a museum, those who also got laid off in the museum sector understand, not a lot of us were kept. We, a lot of us got laid off. So because I lost my job, um, most of the places did grant me an application fee waiver. So all I had to do was email them. The school in Illinois actually has it on their application. If you were granted XYZ as an undergrad, like me, I got a Pell Grant. Because I had a Pell Grant as an undergraduate, I automatically got the fee waiver for that school. So you have to check and see what's in their applications to make sure you are able to get any of these types of accommodations like the fee waiver to apply without having to worry about all of the cost. So just make sure you always email them and ask, how do I apply for an application fee waiver? Usually you can find it on their website. It's pretty easy. Just Google your school name and then applic graduate application fee waiver. And you will usually find the instructions to do that. I technically, for one of the New York schools, technically didn't fit into any of their criteria. I emailed them anyway and said, I lost my job. I was already going to apply to PhD programs for this cycle. I would like to do that. However, I wanted to double check with these circumstances, would I qualify for an application fee waiver? And they sent it to me anyway. So even if you don't entirely qualify, email them, you might be surprised. A lot of them were very lovely and very helpful. One school, however, sent me back basically their page copied and pasted into the email. That made me infuriated. And that was one of the schools I had to pay for because they didn't actually help me at all. So um, I may not be reapplying to that school for the next cycle because I checked your, your website. I know what it says. That's why I emailed you. I was asking you for clarification. You didn't need to copy and paste everything. I read it. I promise. Um, so I may not interact with that school again because that was incredibly frustrating and kind of insulting. I only asked because I couldn't find it on your website. So copying it and putting it back to me did not help me at all. So thanks for that. Um, and then you have to pay to take the GRE, which is $205, or at least it was when I took it last July. Um, and then the scores, like I said, so here's what I messed up on with the scores for the GRE. I took the GRE before all of the schools announced whether or not they were taking students for this cycle. So I sent a lot of my free scores to schools who didn't end up taking students at all this year. So I had to pay for almost all of my scores to be sent out because three of the schools <laughs> that I sent it to ended up saying, we're not taking any students this year for the PhD level sorry, but I had taken the test early enough that I didn't get that information till afterwards. So um, I sent it to my top choice school and then two other schools and then it automatically sent it to my alma mater. So I thought that was kind of weird because I didn't ask for them to do that. So um, that was one of my four. So I don't know what's up with that. I don't know if that's like automatic or if mine just was wonky. If it's automatic, just let me know in the comments because I actually have no idea and I never asked because I got so frustrated. As you can see, this is an incredibly frustrating thing and it's very costly. So, um, so my scores ended up costing me to send $135. So now um, the, the, the extra stuff, I got one of the Magoosh prep courses. I got the prep course when it was on sale and very cheap, which meant it was only $143.20. That was it on sale. So that was almost another $150, okay? So the grand total of all of that was $1,208.20. 
that's what it would have been if I hadn't gotten the application fee waivers for every single, almost every single school. Not every single, I had to pay for three. Um, luckily, um, I actually had help from some lovely people and my parents because I was lucky enough that they said, oh yeah, we'll help you out because they only had to pay for a couple and not the whole thing. So um, then the actual total, okay, is actually $703.20. So even though I had application fee waivers from a majority of the schools I was applying to, I still paid almost a thousand dollars because I had to, well, I mean, it was a little over 700, but that's still, you know, when you don't have that much money, that still feels like almost a thousand, you know what I mean? So with all of that, always look for an application fee waiver for any of the schools you're applying to. If you apply to schools that traditionally don't have application fees, awesome. If you're in a country that usually doesn't have application fees, awesome. Remember the application fee, this is for me as an American applying to United States schools. However, if that sounded expensive to you, International students have to pay more than that, which I think is beyond ridiculous. It's ridiculous that we pay for applications at all, in my opinion, but <laughs> charging international students for extra money to apply seems like an unnecessary barrier they have to overcome in addition to everything else that's required to apply to you know, United States University and I really don't think that you know application fees should be there in the first place but if you're gonna have them there there should be no reason that international students be paying more than us it's the same application I think the only difference is if they have to take the test that has their like English proficiency on it and aside from that like that test is already done, it, it gives you the score and they have to pay to send that to you. There's no reason for our application fee itself to be different. So I find that very odd. And so that's another whole other rant, mini rant that I've already had here. But um, yeah, so I've also told you that now I have to apply again. I didn't get into any of the PhD programs. So I have to choose, okay, everybody always says, you know, top five because it's cheaper. And I get that. And I know some people who will only apply to one and that's it. And they're like, that's the only one I'm doing. And hopefully I get in. And some people do. And that's great. I'm so happy that that worked out for you, but that makes my anxiety go way up because as an undergraduate, I was only allowed to apply to two schools and one had to be in state. So that was my option. I applied to the University of Delaware and I applied to Syracuse. Syracuse, I actually applied to, to be a theater major. I think my life would have been very different if I had gotten into Syracuse because I auditioned for musical theater and I did not get in. It was a very bad audition. Um, so as somebody who's already gone through the, you're only allowed to apply to X amount of schools. Now that I can kind of pay for it myself, I want to give myself more of a chance to apply to other places. But this is so, so expensive. And I feel like it's a hurdle that people really shouldn't have to jump over just to get the education. If we didn't want to be in a PhD program, we wouldn't be trying to get in. And like, I don't, understand why it's such a high expense to apply when I don't I don't understand what where the money is going like if more universities were transparent about it because whoever is working on those applications whatever their actual job description is this kind of labor should already be in their pay so where is the application fee going? What is it actually doing? I want to know. And if somebody has an actual answer for me, great, let me know. But I don't see any transparency. And if we're paying for this service, right? Technically we're paying for them to go through our application. That's 
the gist I, as I understand it, if we're paying for that service and we don't get in, I think it's fair as a student who is trying to get into a PhD program, say, okay, I didn't get in. I would like a detailed explanation why and give me some feedback about what was wrong with my application or what is not necessarily wrong or what could be improved or you know just we had too many students this year and you were xyz in line in terms of who we chose so you know i would like some feedback and it's really discouraging to have a lot of schools saying because we have so many students who apply we can't give everybody feedback and i'm like okay so then why did i pay you to apply like obviously i'm paying to apply so i can get into that school but the application fees are ridiculously high for no feedback or any kind of information about what happens after I've sent that in. So for me, it just seems like it would feel a little better paying that much money if there was a little bit of transparency. And yes, I know I did get application fee waivers, but I lost my job and I had no income aside from my retirement that I got out because I still have not heard from unemployment where more I used to live. And they've never gotten back to me. They're supposed to get back to me in October and then in January and I still haven't heard anything from them. Yes, I've tried to call. No, I cannot get through. <laughs> the state I used to live in is a very big state. So uh, I was unemployed for six months and then I used some of the money to apply for things. And then I used some of the money to move back to where I I wanted to live and now I'm doing a different job and I have a somewhat steady income. But if I was trying to work on the income that I have now and pay for applications to PhD programs, I don't think I could do as many as I did this last go around if I didn't get the application fee waivers. My punchline is if I'm paying $110 even if the student gets an application fee waiver, they're putting in a lot of effort into writing and uploading and editing all of their material. The professors they ask are taking time to write their um, all of the letters of recommendation. The least I would ask for for the universities that give us rejections or tell us we're on a wait list is Give us like a feedback of some sort, even if it's just like a form saying uh, your letters of recommendation were good, your writing sample needs work because X, Y, Z, or your materials were good. However, um, someone beat you out because they had almost the same, you were very head to head, but your undergraduate grades didn't match up to theirs. Even though that doesn't necessarily show, you know, your potential as a scholar, uh, I think work and like what you talk about and do um, is more important than the grades themselves because some people can be very um, good and, and produce wonderful work and still not have the best grades. I think I would just like some idea of why I didn't get in. If you want me to pay something that's akin to my full day's work, on top of more than a month's work of gathering materials, asking other professors for letters of recommendation, writing my cover letter and my statement of purpose, and, and compiling a properly formatted CV tailored to what I want it to say for you as a, as a university and as an academic. And all of that stuff takes a long time. And you know, that's labor. And I would like at least some feedback because I'm paying you while I am doing the labor. But then I get nothing in return if I get rejected at all, unless I ask a specific professor and sometimes they will answer you and sometimes they won't. I got a lovely response from one of the professors when I asked her for feedback. Her feedback was mostly about my writing sample. So that's solid information I can use and then go, okay, now I know that that particular part of my application needs work. And then I can focus on that rather than going, I don't know what was wrong. I have to now figure out how to make everything better. So I would just want some feedback. 
if any of you have anything you want to add or tell me, um, like explain if I missed, you know, crucial points or you want to tell me, well, this is why you would be paying this much money and, you know, you can't expect university people to always respond to like thousands of students. Tell me that too. Um, but if thousands of students are applying and they're each paying a hundred dollars, I think that each of us deserve at least a, hey, you uh, should work on your CV or something like that. All right, I think that's it. I'm gonna try to be a bit more consistent with posting. I finally got my new ring light, as you can probably see reflected in my glasses. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna go and I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will hopefully be back next week so we can talk about um, what happens if you get rejected from every single PhD program you apply to on your first cycle.